Yama and Shida safely coming through in two straight games. We will turn our attention to the defending champion in the men's singles, Victor Axelsson, who also happens to be the Olympic champion and current world number one. He's up against the Asian champion, Lisi Jha of Malaysia. When we look at the men's doubles draw from the quarter-final stage, we had seven different nationalities. Uh, last week, we had eight, which is a real rarity. But this week, we had two Danes. But at semi-final stage, we went from three seeds, all in the top half at the quarter-final stage, to two seeds and none in the bottom half of the draw. Four different nationalities and uh, the top half really has been extremely strong on paper because at the quarter-final stage we had the Olympic champion, the Olympic bronze medalist, the reigning world champion and the Asian champion. And here is the reigning Olympic champion, former world champion and defending champion Victor Axelsen of Denmark. Malaysia! His opponent, Lisi Jha from Malaysia, won the Asian Championships recently in Manila. Beat Jonathan Christie of Indonesia in uh, that final. So for Victor Axelsson, he's been a big supporter of this event. This is his ninth appearance at the Indonesia Open for Lisi Jha. It's just his third, but it's the third consecutive and his first semi-final for the Malaysian. Victor Axelsson has actually been in two finals previously. Not only did he win last year, but he lost in the final in 2018. So this will be a seventh meeting between these two players of the previous six. Six, Axelsson has won four of them, including the last, which was at the quarterfinal of the Denmark Super 1000 last year. Denmark was promoted to a 1000 event uh, because of the enforced cancellation of the China Open, which was designated as one of the Super 1000s. So our court officials from India and Iran. And for Victor Axelsson, well, he is trying to achieve something absolutely extraordinary here this week because he's trying to reach his eighth consecutive Super 1000 tournament final. His tenth in total, and when you consider this is only the 14th Super 1000 event since the inception of the World Tour. That is remarkable. As you can see, he's 28 years of age now, born in Ordenza, and he is enjoying his 80th week in total as world number one. Won his world title in Glasgow in 2017, and these are his matches so far. Well, in the first round, only 12 points dropped against the winner of the French Open last year. Second round against Lu Guangzhou of China. Quarter final against the Olympic bronze medalist Anthony Sinisuka Ginting, the only man that's taken Victor Axelsson to three games over the last two weeks. Because last week, Victor Axelsson won the Indonesia Masters. Lizzie Jha is. 24 years of age from Al Star in Kedah, and he is currently at his career high ranking, his fourth consecutive week at number five. Won the All England title last year, beating his opponent of today in the final. But looking at his results so far, Tamasin from Thailand in the first round, then Samir Verma of India, then beat the world champion, Lopen Yu. Had to save a match point at 19.20 down in that third game before needing three straight points to close it out and book his place in the semi-final. Well, as I was telling you, our court officials Ampar Bave from India and Roshan Omid from 
Iran. Well, both these players have been in tremendous form this year. Li Zhe has been in two finals in his last three tournaments. Victor Axelsson has won three titles from the six tournaments he's played so far. But when you consider two of the tournaments, he withdrew either with injury problem or not feeling well. He has only lost one match so far this year. That was in the semi-final of the German Open. I'm all right. Lizzie is here, Malaysia. And on my left, Victor Axelsen, Denmark. Lizzie is here to serve. Lobo. Play. So the first of the men's singles semi-finals gets underway. Defending champion nearest to us. And Steve, it really is a quite an extraordinary statistic uh, that he's trying to reach his eighth consecutive Super 1000 tournament final. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. Only three Super 1000s a year. Rally. Yeah, long rally too. Steve, did you see who chose them to won the toss? The Texas and won the coin toss and chose to start on the near side here. Excellent, thank you. Oh, he's taken it. Service over, one, two. Very, very early stages. Very tall man, he's a bit back, so some 194. That's six two, foot four. Three. And then he does use his height so well. That's not so often that CGI is the shortest on the court. No, that's true. Yeah, because he's six foot one. 186. Back in. Yeah, it is. Three, Sideways drift from left to right. There was a couple of times in that excellent women's singles with Tai Su Ying that were real banana <laughs> shots. <laughs> it was curveballs. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's right. Well left. Now uh, Steen, I mean obviously we know that Four, Peter Axelson loves to be an attacking player, so he's got a wonderful defence as well, especially for such a tall athlete. But uh, th do you think in a way that Lee Zijar is uh, similar? He likes to play the angles, he likes yeah. to attack. Yeah, I think he's totally like similar, perhaps even more attack uh, searching. Um, and I think they, they've got different kinds of strength in the attack. Axelsen's got um, a lot of variation. So does uh, Sijar, and of course Axelsen has a little bit extra reach, so uh, they come down steep. But the um, the trigger, the quick trigger, the racket that, that there we saw it again, that Sijia has, that's making it very difficult to uh, to judge the direction of it and, and so I'm forward, certain there's going to be a lot of battle for uh, the front court area there's going to be um, a battle as to who can um, get most back in the defense I think right now, as of this week, it's the two best players in the world that we see right now. The most informed players. Yeah. They both played magnificent semi-finals against top opposition. Six, five. Axis and one last You mean quarterfinals or quarterfinals, yeah, this is the semi final. Yeah. Right? <laughs> totally off. Yeah, they were both tough matches, both wonderful for us to watch. And Sid yeah, who was it he lost to last week? Was that Ginting? He lost to Ginting in the quarterfinal. Yeah. In three games. Having won the first. Which was also a good match. That's a wild backhand. Yeah, I think he should have left it. Seven, five. Six, seven. Yep. to reach a third final here, Victor Axelson, but there is a Dane that's already achieved that. Three men single finals at the Indonesia Open. Jano Jorgensen, who won the title once back in 2014. That was in three consecutive Seven, finals. Eight. <coughs> Threaded that down. Nine, the line. seven. Good, good yeah, Jano Jorgensen, he also had a game that was suited well for these playing conditions here. Okay, thank you. Even the flat game. Able to pick up speed and uh, go for the attack. Nine, seven.
brilliant. Wonderful net play from the Malaysian. Eight, nine. Oh, superb. Well, that, that's the uh, smash I was talking about in the beginning. The uh, very, very quick trigger, uh, trigger racket four. there. Look at that. Yeah, sort of the, a rebound action. Exactly. It's like the uh, arm doesn't move at all. It's the racket that does everything. The racket and the forearm. It's a beautiful smash and it's very, very efficient. Now, yesterday, Catch. Watching uh, the Li Shijar against the Looking You match, I, I tried to get a read on what side his smashes are directed at, and I think when it's when the shuttle is outside of the body and the right side, it tends to go to his own forehand side. That so means retracts his backhand side, and when it's inside the body, so to speak, inside Ten. over the shoulder or uh, more uh, inside the body. Then uh, there's a lot of the smashes that goes to uh, Axelson's forehand side, according to my very unofficial read. Push long, and it is Lisi Jar who has the advantage of the mid game interval albeit only a one-point advantage. certainly couldn't hear anything there, Steve. I couldn't hear anything either. Eleven ten. Play. Okay, so we didn't get to hear One, the coaching. Ten. Steam, what would you be saying to Victor Axelson in that timeout? Uh, I, would, um, I would say that it was important to uh, win the front court to control the net. He starts to stay forward. Um, it's a little bit 11, more difficult 12. for CGR to, um, to play his back court, so he, in my opinion, he can afford standing forward. My goodness, I think that lift was way out. I think so too. But in order to win it, he needs to to dare play the backcourt once in a while. And sorry, sorry. he's got to play the backcourt while he's got the opportunity Percy. of playing 11. the net. So uh, um, I would like him to, to um, start already in the service situation. That's much, much better in my opinion. Try to move Sijar away in the service situation a lot of times, and then at other times there's going to be room. There was the room, but he's not keeping the net. He's got to stay there. He's got to sacrifice a little bit of um, speed towards the back line. Good defense.
Good variation. But here he gets to uh, move uh, Sija all over the court, and I think that's really important for uh, for Axelsen. And that 13. he can move him with reasonably flat shots to the back line. If they, if he plays from below the tape, too much below the tape and needs to lift, then he plays it into the hands of, of uh, Li Shijiang, the way I see it. And, I mean, it's basically the same if um, if I change uh, side and, and go with Li Shijiang. It is going to be a battle for the front court. Um, who can some put some deceptions on the net? Who 14, can uh, 12. sort of uh, read the opponent right, take the chances on the right time? Um, who has a um, a good um, video information on on shots that are more likely to come? That's a nice block. Yeah, I think he could have left one or two earlier in this. Game big traps and some so game well. long at the back line. 13, 14. Well left. Excellent beat by here. Easy shot. Service over. 15, 13. I think once in a while Axelsen also needs to uh, to utilize the body smashes. I wonder if he's uh, saving it a little bit. So if it's over. close, he can uh, move immediately 14, afterwards. It's 15. more difficult to... He can't really get any angles on, uh, on a body smash, so Axelsen is more uh, certain on as to where he's got to go. That's one well left. Back level. 15 all. Service over, 16, 15. won his All England, yeah. I think he okay. was absolutely phenomenal at the net. Started out in the quarterfinal where he defeated Pentagon Mortar. Totally controlled the net. Uh, good smash. Service over. 16 off. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Missed it. So, so well, it's a great effect off. with the cross-court angled shot from this round the head position, trying to keep his opponent honest by okay. mixing it up a little, playing it straight down the line. Yeah. It's really, really good um, thinking by Nisi Chai. It's not like everything is wasted. He lost the point, but if he can play one more than two times, then he's achieved his goal, I think. Brilliant. Oh. Small things like this that can uh, chip so a game either way. 
18, 17. Did remarkably well. Keep the rally going, I think, perhaps, as um, then guessed correctly on his defensive shots. It was an open court, but he couldn't control it enough. Two-point cushion and two points away from the opening game. The number 19, 16 from Malaysia. 17. Never be more than two points between them all Seven the way sword, through this opening game. 18, 19. two of them to take the open game against game the Olympic and Indonesia play. Open defending champion. That's a very positive play. One game point well saved. And it's gone wide. It's an opening game. Oh, he's going to challenge. But he knows. Yeah. He knows that it's wide. Yeah. the instant review, but I'm pretty certain that's wide, and I think it's well wide. Yeah. So the opening game, 21-19 in favour. First game, one point. This is yeah, 21-19. What a good opening game. Just about 21 minutes for game number one. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds, Victor. So one game to the good Lucy Jacques. And I think we had more success there being over there here. Second game. Yep. Axelson's coach. Lobo. Uh, the last thing was it was 
play. You've got to use a lot of energy in the middle game or the in-between game where none of you really are in attack or defense this game here. Um, that was the last thing, but the first thing I heard was important to send a signal when when you're staying there, and I can only interpret it as staying at the net. Um, standing your ground, daring so to cool. leave the backcourt open and um, force Sejir to uh, hit with accuracy. One block. Um, they, they also said something that I I don't know if I, I misheard it or they said now he's playing with the drift and that is definitely not correct. Axelsen is the one playing with the drift but the corner in Axelsen's backhand is reasonably fast. Uh, we have seen matches where the drift has changed. So so yeah. But one off. from what I've been seeing earlier today and during this match, uh, I'm with you. I think the shuttle is flying faster. Coming towards... Did you? Yeah. But, the there is, side. but there is a, a corner where things are... I mean, Axelson's forehand corner, that's the slowest one on the court. That's where you can push your shot the most. And CGS um, forehand corner, that's... The most dangerous to hit. Two, one. Look at the execution there again. I love that um, shot action from Li Shijia. I think. I don't think anybody does it better. That's the thing. That's that's I think what they're interpreting so is he's playing Two with long. the drift, but that's a sideways drift that's uh, affecting the long uh, the play alongside the court. Well, that was one Three. of the Two. dare to stand your ground. Yeah. In fact, I. To me, he almost overcommitted. Well, that's the danger. Yeah. No, it worked for him because he came back to the net, but if it hadn't been done, that's a perfect length on that lift from Axelson. And this towards what is the most safe corner on Shijar's side. Of course, it must be since the forehand corner was the Fastest okay. Okay. on the whole pole. Uh, it's a lovely smash again, isn't it? That's his favourite shot, that round yeah. the head cross court. And that's one of the things that he so should so try and, and utilise now here in this... Um, second game, Sija, and one that Victor needs to be alert to, because that is playing, being played a little bit with the drift, and if he can get the right marking on and keep it inside the court, then it's very, very difficult for Victor to save it. That's the uh, problem. Over. Yeah. A little bit uh, off mark, three. and that's sort of um, highlighted by the sideways drift. Oh, could have killed that. He was trailing a lot there. Victor Axelson challenges fall out. Uh, I think the line judge got that right. I think so too.
for five plays. Brilliant. That is just such a lovely, accurate smash. Service over. Six, four. Just inside the line. and two on the back line there and uh, from Axelson's perspective Thank you. Thank you. I actually feel that he's he's played a little bit better been a little bit ahead in the rallies here in the second game but you can't see it on the scoreboard yeah uh, I'd agree with that think about it. Oh, it did have a think about it. Eight, six. Landed in. Service over nine seven. Oh, great. You'd hardly think that angle was possible if you hadn't just seen it, would you? No. That is amazing. Okay. Thank you. And the thing is, even if Axelsons get to it, it needs help to stay in. If you just place it at a direct block, so to speak, there's a good chance that it will um, Eight, go nine. wide right because of the sideways drift. Another very accurate smash straight down the line, setting up the rally for Axelson. Okay, thank you. It's 
Arms going wide. And to the mid-game interval with a three-point advantage. Much more purposeful in his last few rallies, Axelson. I think it was long as well, but it was well wide. significance there? Uh, very little. Uh, 11, we got in late. Uh, it was Play. something about um, maybe not the first time the chances there, maybe not even the second. So maybe it's about putting 12, some variation eight. into his um, attack. But um, right now, Shija is, um, is not where he um, should be. He's trading on uh, almost everything. Absolutely commanding these rallies now. 38. Dictating the pace. Well left. And he's 14, opened up a six point eight. cushion. Yeah, I wonder if um, the fact that. Um, the fast corner now is in big tracks this backhand side is making it really really difficult for Lee Jar. I think that could be quite a big part of the Malaysian game plan big tracks and uh, long backhand side and now it's difficult to play it so it's just playing defense there's, there's something wrong 15, well this is six straight points now for a seven point advantage When you say something's wrong, you mean something's wrong physically with Lee Sisha? I don't know. I, 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 I'm starting to look at it, and he just hit his hip twice. Big look at how he walked with his leg there. Ball in. That looked like uh, Sarpovic. Where he retires in the final. They then score Pin Yu with a back injury. Well, the challenge here from Victor Axelsson, if he loses this, he's got no challenges left in this second game. Yeah, good challenge. Correction, out. Sixteen, eight. Play. Well, the run of points comes to an end, but seven straight points so from 9-8 to 16-8 has put a very, very different complexion on this second game. Yeah, because it's pretty much over, barring um, a streak Ten, of mistakes from Axel. I would be careful using too much energy on long rallies. Yeah, Lisi Chan has basically given up on his second game. 17. Two lucky guesses in that rally about where the smash was going to come.
He's guessed the game. This makes no sense. I mean, why, why go for these guesses if you're not really uh, interested anyway? Eighty ten. over 11 18 perfection service over 19 11 game point opportunities to level this semi-final one game apiece. Game point, 11. Game. Well. Second game, won by Victor Axelson. 21-11, one game all. Umpire confirming that it's one game all. I sincerely hope you're wrong, Steen and that there isn't an injury problem and that he just felt the second game was beyond him. One game apiece. Well, sadly, the umpire is raising his right arm, which means that he's calling the tournament referee, which probably means that the doctor is going to need seconds. to come on. 20 seconds. Coach. Coach. Thank you. And the coach has to leave. He needs a spray. No, I can't Victor. see the umpires in the way there. Is it his back? I think the yeah. hip. It's his hip. Can you just put this band on side? Thank you. players considerably longer after the timeout. I know in tennis you have to have the uh, well Final I think game. it's they call the trainer Double. to start assessing Play. or treating yeah. Yeah. at the start of the interval between games. I think maybe we should consider that in badminton. Yeah, that's a fabulous shot. Service over. One love. Service over. One all. Oh, 
unbelievable net exchange. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Two, one. Played a long match yesterday um, against Dokkin Yu with Li Zhijiang. Yeah, and it's emotional as well when you have to come from a Three, match point down. One. Yeah. An hour and five minutes, but then Axelson's match was an hour and seven minutes yesterday. Yeah, that was also a fantastic match against Kinting. recovery for Lee Zijar. I want some of that spray for my knees. <laughs> <laughs> I want a full body spray. <laughs> One of the things they discussed in the end, Axelson and uh, with Dan well, and Locke, was that uh, they needed to work uh, a little bit in the beginning, but every time they tried, or every time Victor's tried, uh, He's just down one of his smashes. Lucky net board. Service over. Five, two. Good show, you should try. Three, five. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Not the neck cord, the shuttle got Seven, deflected. Five. And Lee Sijar very nearly got it back. He almost got it into his racket. Victor, 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 Victor. Yeah, well, satisfied with the uh, sort of uh, middle game there. Axis. Four, five. Oh my goodness. Total miss hit. Service over. Six, four. Going wide, yeah. That's a good rally. Service over. Some quality net play once more. Five, six. Yep. perspective. Unbelievable. Oh, this is fantastic. What a rally. 
And perfect, perfect net so, shot so from Li Zizia to end it. Seven, five. Good net shot again. It's gone wide. Seven, four. Six, seven. Okay, thank you. Lee. Six, seven. Oh, he's challenging that. That may have hit the line. Challenges. Ball out. I think we're seeing signs again that uh, Sija is trailing a little bit in the um, rallies. Last two, three rallies. Here we go. This could be crucial. No, it's just out. Challenge that, uh, successful. She can open the break. I expect. Service over. Eight, six. Play. Don't believe it. It's fabulous. How on earth did Lee Sija so get the shuttle back? Seven eight. Well, we're not seeing it. Yeah, unfortunately, it was earlier than that. Okay. Well, he's Thank grazed you. his finger. Clearly wide. Uh, and momentum access. And at yeah, the but, moment. but you made the point in the opening game, which I totally agreed with, that he seemed to have, have the better of the rallies in the opening game, but he wasn't converting it into points. Yeah. And that's what he's got to make sure he does now, if you're right, that the momentum is with him. Yeah. Because it can easily change. Yeah. Let's get a bad feeling about something. Service charge, drift, change, yeah. or whatever. Service over, 9 8. Unbelievable. That is just ridiculous. How did he do that? Blended in. Well, he had some issues leaving shuttles in his quarterfinal yesterday, this Jeff near side of the court, against Ginting that were landing in. He started Ginting in what? the second game. Yeah. Wasn't it? No. I, 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 can't, I can't even remember the matches from yesterday. It was up 10 6 or something. And he left two shuttles like that. Exactly. I think that was in the second game. Okay. It was in the second game.
That was a really good lift from Lee Tsai Chao. And the moment we mentioned momentum axis and it changed back to uh, Lee Tsai Chao. Yeah. Get any of that steam? Not really. Not at all. Not a word. Eleven eight. Play. Gosh, that's a good return of serve. Seems well, both over. players have played Nine. better from the far Eleven. side of the court. And remember, Axelson chose end, so presumably he feels that he's going to finish the good end. So it's over 12, 9. Wow. That's gone miles long. Service over. Wow. 10, 12. And it looks like he's not comfortable playing that corner, uh, Lee Si Jia. Not only beside, because of the drift, but because it goes into access in his forehand. It's wide. 11, 12. That's clever. Twelve. Oh. I think Sujan needs more variation from his long backhand. Either attacks or the cross. Um, this is your challenges. Ball out. Challenge here. Yeah. Made it long. Nah, I thought it was long too. It's his first challenge with the match. There's Wall. My goodness me, that's a wasted challenge, challenge isn't it? Not even close. One challenge remaining. 13, 12, play. So for the first time in this third and deciding game, Victor Axelson goes into the lead. Another one goes long. Five straight points. 14, 12. I'm thinking whether the the drift actually was as access and read it in the beginning or it has changed. It, it wasn't in the women's singles, I can no. assure you. So it's it changed wasn't. throughout the day. Not that I was calling that match, no. obviously, but from me watching. Nice. Another one goes long. And Six straight, straight points. Signaling to his coach, what am I going to do? Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's what you're going to do. So 
Uh, it's rather difficult to hit 13, winners like 15. that, rally after rally. Changes in this uh, second part of the third game. I mean, the, the second game at all where he played the whole game here, we can't really okay. count that because it was uh, a big, big win for Ecstasy. Well, the match clock just ticks over the hour mark. One game all and one point in it. control on his neck shots earlier on in the rally but look at this that is brilliant nowhere near being a fault 15 all it's well left so sore 16 15 what does it make four Four mistakes on the back line. Lucy jump here since the changing ends. Since the change of ends. Yeah. That is amazing the way he gets to uh, that short so forehand corner. Lucy jump. 16 off. Gosh, that was a steep kill, wasn't it? Stays in. Oh, my Fantastic. goodness me. Have you ever seen anything like it? He was going to leave it. Suddenly decided to play 17, it. 16. And played the perfect shot. Okay, thank you. Look, he's leaving it. Suddenly, when it's behind him, he plays the drop shot. Well, I think I've seen it all now. <laughs> and again, that's 17, one of the situations 16. that can change yeah. the direction of a match. Away from an eighth out. consecutive Super 1000 tournament final. Well, I don't believe he's going to win this challenge. I saw that out in two directions. Indeed, right. it was. Challenge so, no challenges left. No challenges remaining. 19, 16, play. Well, it was that run of six straight points from 9, 12 down that I think may have been the decisive passage of play. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, gets the net cord. Match point opportunities on a run of four straight points 
and that extraordinary rally 20. where Axelson was going to leave it, That's decided point. to play it. That was 16 all. 16. And you said it, Steen, sometimes a rally like that can change the momentum of the match. Four straight points and now four match point opportunities. First one is well saved. Yeah, yeah. Well, good courage from Lucy Jar. Okay. Yeah. 17 20. Uh, somebody behind the court using a flashlight. Sorry. Uh, good shot what a backhand smash well this is where Axelson would get a little bit nervous two match points 18, have come and gone 20. but another two remain that's a fantastic backhand smash match point number three Match point number three, brilliantly saved. 19, 20. Match point number four. I don't believe it. Four 20. extraordinary oh. points from Lucy Sharp. 20 all and extra points required until the clear two point winning margin. Straight points. Uh, I can tell you all the photographers, they're changing sides here next yeah. to the court. So having saved four match points, now it's a match point opportunity for Lee Sijar. He saved a match point in his quarter-final before going through. Wow. Amazing. What a match. 21 all. Look at the angle on that. Control. This is unbelievable. What a rally. <laughs> Absolutely extraordinary. One of the wildest rallies I've seen. There was a net point on that defense from Axelson. Oh, they've had it all. Incredible Mid rally. Mid so now Mid a fifth match point opportunity for Victor Axelson. 21. Victor, Shadow, hold it, Leon. He's done it. <laughs> what a match. Well, wins on his fifth match point opportunity, having saved a match point at 20-21. It is 
an eighth consecutive Super 1000 tournament final. A tenth Super 1000 final in total. And this is only the 14th ever Super 1000 tournament. What a record. Absolutely extraordinary. Well, what a fantastic match. An hour and ten minutes for 23-21 in the deciding game. Well, extraordinary shots, wonderful badminton. And history. Victor Axelson tomorrow will contest his eighth consecutive Super 1000 tournament final. Extraordinary. Well, what a men's singles we have just witnessed. Victor Axelsson, the defending champion, through to his second consecutive Indonesia Open final, having been match point down, winning on his fifth match point. We turn our attention now to men's doubles, and the first of the two 